Hi guys, been a while since I made a video, so I thought I would post a little update and just uh, let you know how things are have progressed. Um, if you've been watching any of my previous videos, you'll have seen uh, this e-bike, electric bike that was built using a shift up, built using a car alternator. Uh, this is the this is the alternator um, driving. Uh, a belt going down to a pulley on the back wheel and this one this bike worked really well um, since the last video was made I put a, uh, a battery pack built with 18650 batteries uh, I think there's 50 of those batteries 10 in series 5 in parallel um, so that gives 36 volts and that works really well it gets I would probably get a 10 mile range or so using this battery pack with the current setup. Um, since then I've also, I'm sure you can see all this gaffer tape, this is actually a 1500 watt controller uh, which I've connected in very temporarily. Uh, it's just basically connected uh, to test that the controller would work. It was one I bought from eBay for only £30 or so, delivered from China which is quite amazing. Um, and I decided to go with that because uh, the controllers, this controller that I previously bought is only 800 watts, um, which is fine, it, it, it goes, but I want a bit more go. Um, I originally bought this one because it was uh, listed as being suitable for motors with Hall Effect sensors or without Hall Effect sensors. And since my... Uh, alternator doesn't have Hall Effect sensors then uh, I thought that would be a, a sensible purchase and it worked well but like I say it's only 800 watts um, so I thought maybe if I went for a bigger one I might get more more oomph so after watching uh, some videos by a chap called Chettle Biker um, uh, he suggested that most of these e-bike controllers would be able to to drive my motor so I bought one and it works it works very well in fact this controller is you can really feel the difference in power between the two controllers even with the same battery pack so I was quite surprised at that I'm very pleased anyway I also put um, this disc on the uh, on the bottom pulley just to stop the belt from coming off which did happen once or twice uh, and that that works well it's just a little alloy piece of alloy cut out to the right shape and sort of bashed on, bolted on there. So that works really well. The whole bike works great, uh, but it still has all the same problems that it had before. It's way, way too heavy. This thing, you can barely lift the back wheel off the ground. Um, it must be 20 or 30 kilos. Um, so it's very, very heavy. There's far too much um, resistance whenever you back wheel just doesn't want to spin whenever you twist it so there's a lot of a lot of losses there which um, I want to try and iron out and the way I plan to do that is with this this is going to be e-bike number two or number three I guess as you would call this e-bike number two it's a, a proper one with proper mid uh, mid drive from Bafang, it's a 500 watt one, and this bike is it's nice. It's really practical, but it's not that much fun, to be honest. So what I plan to do is to use this bike, which, as you can see, has rear suspension and front suspension. Um, and you can see I have it all stripped down at the moment. So I plan to use this bike um, to replace or to uh, uh, as a as a version two of the the other alternator bike, um, the reason I have the pedals off is because I am going to use. I'll just bring you over and show you. I'm going to use this. This is a free wheel. You see, it's spinning around there. That is a free wheel crank. And what I've done is. I bought this freewheel crank from a company called SJS Cycles. Um, 
It's the only one I could find on the internet at a sensible price. It was only 55 or 60 pounds or something like that. So this is a freewheel crank. And what it does is it allows the, the motor to drive this cog around without the pedals uh, spinning at the same time. This crank has a, a BCD of 104 millimeters. And what that means is the distance from the middle of this hole to the middle of this hole is 104 millimeters. So I had to get a couple of cogs that would match that. So I bought this one, it's an alloy cog, 48 tooth I think it is. Probably too big, I think I may actually be better off with a smaller one. But I have a smaller one on order and I can always change it if I need to. And what I've done is, I've got, this is a, um, this is a, a, a cog has come from, um, I think it's an e-scooter, some sort of a scooter anyway. Um, so I've got that. And you can see I've welded, I've actually welded these, these buds, I'm going to weld this one on as well. Welding these buds onto the back, and that's just to give clearance uh, because the, I had tried doing it with just bolts and it was, it was hitting the, um, the frame of the bike. The, the reason I didn't go with the smaller uh, purpose-made screws that you get for these cranks is that I, couldn't, I didn't have any long enough. Uh, so I thought, what the heck, this is the only thing I'm welding. I'm, I'm going to damage by doing this. Um, so it doesn't really matter, I can replace that quite easily. And to be honest with you, I had to drill the, these holes, and they drilled so easily with just ordinary high-speed steel drill bits. I'm not entirely convinced that this, is, that this particular uh, wheel will last very long anyway. This seems to be quite soft. Anyway, what I plan to do is to weld this in, get this all bolted up, get it bolted back to the bike and or should I get a get a screwed onto the bike and get the chain fitted and basically get it working again as a bike and then the plan is to use this uh, this is left this over here <clears throat> okay this is another alternator uh, it's one that I got from a I just bought it off, off, bought it off eBay. It originally was on a, a Rover, as you can see. I think it was a Rover 160 or XT160, ZT160, something like that. Can't remember. It doesn't really matter. It's the, uh, the the model of the car, but this is basically a Rover alternator. A couple of reasons why I bought this. Um, I saw that Chettle Biker had been using a similar one, and his seemed to work well. That's one reason. So I knew it would work with the uh, controller I've got. Uh, the other reason was it has a nice metal cover here, which sort of protects the whole back end of it. Uh, my other one doesn't have that, and the wires are sticking out quite badly. Uh, I think this is a 100 amp motor, although I, I'm not sure about that. But um, that's... It's, it's sort of reasonable size, it's not too thick. So hopefully this will do the job. And what I plan to do is to take this little 13 tooth pulley. Um, this pulley is the match of this pulley, as you can see. Uh, although this is very hard and this is very, very soft. So like I say, I'm not entirely sure that this uh, this cog is going to last very long, but anyway, um, that I plan to weld on there. And the plan is to weld it on in such a way that it, oops, <coughs> puckle. The plan is to weld it on in such a way that I can weld it to that nut, this nut here. If I can weld that to that nut, then the whole thing can be taken off. If I need to put another pulley on, different size, whatever, if it's just welded to that nut, then that should hopefully 
um, allowing me to make changes if I need to in the future. I could just weld it straight onto the end there. And worst case scenario, just cut it off. You just cut the whole thing off. But hopefully I'll not. I'll see how I get on. I'll try welding it to the to the nut first, just on the top there. And we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's the current situation. The idea for this is that this bolts on here, somewhere like that, with the chain going from the pulley, from the, the um, sprocket here, to the bigger sprocket on the on the crank. So the motor drives the crank, the crank drives the rear gears. So you still have uh, seven gears at the rear. Um, yes, you got, I'm going to lose the three gears that were here, but that doesn't matter. So you got the seven gears at the rear, so you can still get plenty of torque by changing to a lower gear and plenty of speed by changing to a higher gear. So that's the plan. Uh, we've got a 13 to 80 uh, reduction going from the uh, sprocket on this to the sprocket on this. That'll give us a 13 to 80 reduction. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but it's what, 6, 7 to 1, 8 to 1, something like that. Um, which hopefully will be enough. I know that the, the motor will want to spin up at two or 3,000 RPM. So uh, there's no way that I can pedal that fast. So we'll see how it goes. That's the current situation. Um, I'm going to get this... Uh, this the last of this uh, crank welded up this last little spud welded up to this sprocket and then we'll, we'll see what happens after that all right see you later bye right well after a lot of faffing about and uh messing around and swearing and cussing and general banging thumping and welding we've got this uh freewheel crank fitted with the uh, scooter sprocket on the back. Uh, so the idea behind that is the scooter sprocket uh, will have the smaller chain going to it and then it'll go forward. So anyway, as you can see, one freewheeling crank, which seems to be working well. I had to put a spacer in here to try and uh, give it a little bit of extra space. As you can see, there's not a lot, there's not a very big gap in there. Just about enough for the chain to go in. And this seems to be reasonably, reasonably straight. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's not too bad. There's probably not much, probably wasn't perfect when the bike was new. So that's that, it's done. So that's the first part of this. Yeah, the, the hard bit. For me, the hard bit is anything that involves welding because my welding is horrible, really bad. But the next bit's gonna be the really hard bit because the next bit involves welding. Yeah. Something under this. <sighs> Look at everything. What I need to do next is to get this welded to that so that, that can screw on. The only difficulty with that, of course, is that even if I do manage to get this to go on and screw on, because of the way that this spins, it's going to want to unscrew itself every time I use it. So what I'll probably do is weld it on like that. Screw it. Screw it on. Oops, it fell down. Screw that on. And probably put another weld in the tip. Just to stop it from to stop that from coming off. I can always grind the weld off again if I need to. So that's the current plan, so we're going to have a go at that. 
now and see how we get on. Right, well I've got that welded and ground back. Unfortunately, I lost a couple of teeth in the process just there. As you can see, yeah, there's the, um, I probably should have ground this bolt down a bit thinner. I could have taken off another five or six mil of the diameter of that, which would have meant that it would be uh, welding closer to the center, the center of this. So I should have done that. But what I will do is uh, I'll probably order up another couple of these uh, pulleys, these uh, uh, cogs, or sprockets or whatever you call them. Um, simply because, because I haven't welded directly to this, I welded it to the bolt instead, it means that I can have another go. It'll not do any harm. And I've just discovered that the way that this uh, motor will be spinning, it's actually going to be tightening the uh, tightening that bolt and sprocket on to the uh, shaft. So uh, that's great. That's great. It means that, like I say, nothing, no harm done. If this is not good enough, which I uh, have a feeling it may not be good enough. I did have a go at, well, at grinding it back down again to um, to make it fit the chain, and the chain does go around it. Uh, so it'll be okay. The only thing I'm, it'll, I think it'll be okay in the chain. But what I'm concerned about is the rubbish welds. Uh, I had to grind them back so far to um, try and uh, get access to the the teeth again. Uh, that I have a notion that the welds aren't very strong. But like I say, I'll order another one of these. Uh, sprockets and have another go. No harm done because easy peasy I can swap them anytime I like. It also means that if I decide to put a bigger sprocket on here uh, I just have to unbolt this one and bolt the new one on. So that's the theory behind doing it this way and hopefully that will work out. Uh, it does mean that it's sits out a little bit further from the um, from the alternator than I hoped but I guess I could use a use a narrower um, bolt to do that. I have like two or three of these bolts here so I'll be okay for that. Anyway that's the current situation and um, like I say this will now go on to this Somewhere about here. That goes about there somewhere. And as you can see, I've got the the chain and everything back on. I will have to put a derailleur on here because I can see this is trying to come off that sprocket already. So I'll put a derailleur on here to keep that on. And uh, yeah, I think we're we're making some progress. So anyway. When I get more, a bit more done, I'll come back. Cheers.